Welcome to No Marshall Needed. My name's Lee. I'm Chris. This is Sky, and uh, here's what you can expect in this episode. I need some new charge leads. So we've just had the 1-8th world out in Australia. So apart from all the dangerous little critters that everything's trying to kill you, you're away for two weeks. How do you prep for that? Um, I think you prep the same as any other race. You uh, do as much practice as you can beforehand, learn as much as you can about the car you're using. Obviously for me, it's, it's changing all the time, whichever car I use in Ape Scale. Um, so learn as much as you can and uh, get the car ready and go. I mean, that's all you can do really is be best prepared as possible. So which car did you take then? I the took end? the Agama. Um, I've been, you know, obviously with the Nemo connection with Temscal, I started using the car a bit after Slough. Um, and it's, it's been good. It, it was really good for me. Uh, we've been testing a lot of West Mill, did a lot of laps, um, learned a lot about the car. It was, it was, it was impressive. So yeah, I went with that. Um, it's here on the wall. There we go. There it is. Um, had a few prototype parts on it, which, uh, the Agama guys, Nemo guys, uh, sorted me out, which was really nice of them. Um, so yeah, it was it was a pretty good event. Um, we learned quite a bit for our, our future car that comes out with Infinity. We, I think we learned quite a lot of this race. So yeah, it was good. So you go out. You're used to doing nationals, both eighth and tenth, and you go out, and all of a sudden it's a it's a world. Is the atmosphere different, say, compared to a UK national event? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, for the worlds. Obviously, there's a lot more pressure. Um, it's, it's a lot slower than what you may think. Like the, the days are pretty relaxed as you have so much time between runs. You only get maximum of two runs a day, maybe even one. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of time to be uh, to be messing about with your car. You know, you're under a lot less pressure to get things ready for the next race as what you would be at national. National is quite fast paced compared. Um, but then obviously the competition level of the worlds is very high as well. So yeah, they're, they're very different events. Um, I'm not sure which one I prefer to be honest. I quite like nationals where you're quick fire and you're on, yeah. you're off, you're marshal, you get your car ready, you're back on again. Real fast paced stuff, it's good. Um, but then obviously the world is the world and you want to you compete with the best guys. So. Does that make it a harder step up? So when you're sitting there chilling in the pits or doing whatever for like hours and all of a sudden you're on, is that step change harder to deal with? I think so, especially in Australia because the track would always change. Um, so depending on the temperature and there were water in the track. So every four runs the track got watered. So if you went on straight after the water, it was completely different to if you went on last, for example, before they bought it again. Um, that compiled with the temperature, because if in the middle of the day, if you just got the wet track, the sun dried it really fast and it was really good. In the middle of the day, if you got the driest track, it was really dusty and really hard to drive. At night, the sun didn't dry it as fast, so the track would stay wetter longer, which made the car pretty slow, because in the wet track, it's slower, but it's easier to drive. So yeah, it was it was super, Every time you were on a track, it was different. And because you were having like six hours between runs, you kind of forgot what it was like. So it was, yeah, it was hard work. But um, yeah, ultimately the guys got the hang of it and the best guys won at the end of the day. So when you get out there, obviously you're seeing the Euros guys that you normally, you know, not say hang around with, but you see at things like EOSs and you see at, you know, the bigger events that, that happen. And then you've got the people coming in from, you know, Asia Pack and, and the US is like Mayfield and, and you know, everyone else turning up. Is it a reunion or is it very much like you're just there as a group yourselves and it's kind of a not a you know acknowledgement or is it kind of like a catch up is it you know a re, you know meet up with old mates or what yeah i think it's to be honest i felt like i saw less people at the worlds than what i have at any other event i don't know uh, you kind of you, you you're meant to pit in countries but everyone ends up in teams okay so you you kind of hang with the guys that are in your pit area or chat to them and um yeah, although you're in the same kind of tent, you find yourself staying where you are almost. You know, I'm sort, I'm sure there's some more sociable people out there that roam around a bit more. <clears throat> but yeah, I didn't really feel like I, I saw anyone. Considering we were there for like ten days, it was a bit weird. So um, I think everyone's very focused. It's it's probably a lot less sociable than than a lot of races. So we've got some footage from the world of one of your qualifying days. I think it's heat two, where I think you, you know you won that one. Cool. That's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we noticed. <laughs> Even if we were staying up to a ridiculous o'clock to watch it. <laughs> what was the actual track like? Can you talk us around it? 
Yeah, I mean, um, are we doing a whole lap here? Whatever's the, the relevant bits. The relevant bits. I mean, we got the, the two straightaways as such. Um, the end of the first straight was a little bumpy. Um, you probably couldn't grasp that with the video. You had to slow down a little more than what you would if you were just balls out and, and doing it as a normal yeah. turn. The steps at the back, you just had to get the braking point right, especially if you're in one of the dustier runs, because if you miss your braking point, you went too far and you got in the dust, and then you couldn't get back as easy. Um, around the back, there's a small little double. That was all pretty pretty okay, um, easy to see. Then when you came down on yourself before the double tabletop, uh, it was quite a trans. It was quite a, a steep slope transition there, yeah. which you couldn't grasp from the video, I don't think. And the car, even even driving it after a couple of days, I went and looked at it again and realised how steep it was. I hadn't appreciated when I did the first track walk. Um, so once once you kind of grasped how steep it was, you, you drove a little better for it. Um, I was just trying to hack it round. I think I was accelerating too early, and it was getting loose before going down the hill, and that's the car started fucking around it. But after that, there was a little hole in the double at times. Other times not. Obviously, it was a long long week. Um, but the double double was okay. I mean, the biggest problem for everyone was this this step down bit. Mm -hmm. So the hairpin into a step down. I mean, before we started, the the jump face was questionable. I mean, before a track went round, right. I looked at it and said that's going to be hard work, especially after ten days, and it was. Um, there was holes in it. It wasn't a nice takeoff anyway. You didn't get the best run at it. It was kind of potluck to an extent. You know, your car had to be good on it. If your car wasn't good on it you weren't doing it so it was semi potluck um, obviously in the final people like the master on just did it every lap for no problem but even he crashed it a few times which you know and you're in the middle of the track it wasn't like you hit a pipe or anything so that coming down the hill again it would get very dusty there before you set up for the double triple uh, I had a few errors like just falling off the side where you get a little bit in the dust and it's hard to get the car back um, so yeah, the, the big triple was a little difficult to get the landing right every time. Sometimes you over jumped a little bit and if you under jumped, you were crashing. So it was just essential that you, you kept it as nice as you could. Um, and then the chicane along the front was a pretty cool section actually. Um, you could gain a lot of time there. You couldn't lose a massive, massive amount, but you could gain a lot for sure if you were, if you were committed. So through there little step up and then like a temp scale section to finish the lap nice and tight over a couple of fingers and uh, yeah that was it I mean it was a good fun layout um, say so the biggest issue for me was just the changing you know of if it was wet or dusty or dry or whatever so that was the hard bit um, but I think they did the best they could the track crew was you know phenomenal the amount of work they did over the the nine days we were ten days we were there water in every four runs just like I mean that's a lot of manpower and it's a lot of effort so Congratulations to them, they did a great job, commendable. I think on that subject, the, the footage, because obviously that's all we got at this side, was awesome, just across the board. Yeah, in the early heats, it's just a static camera just looking out and, and showing yeah. what's going on on the track. But as it moved through, they put, like like anything does, there's more and more detail, more and more commentary. And, the, and I have to say, the, the, the guy doing the commentary, like 12 hours in a stint, and it was all, it wasn't just like, and here's another shot of, blah, blah, it was really good stuff. So I've got to say fair play to him for, for the stuff he's done. Yeah, Chris Chris Mitchell, that would be the guy. Okay. Yeah, very, very good commentator. We didn't see him much because he was up there all day. Um, I think you have to give a shout out to the referees as well. One of them being our English ref, Mark Stitson. He got flown over there and did a really good job. Um, I got a penalty, so, you know, obviously it wasn't my fault. But, um... <laughs> Nice recovery. Yeah, smooth, right. smooth. Uh, so Mark, you know, he was up there all day, you know, and it, it was cold up there. It wasn't warm like you'd imagine Australia. You'd probably see us all in jackets and stuff. But on that driver's stand, it was especially cold. The wind would really get you. The flies were, as I, I said to Chris earlier, the bravest flies you've ever seen. You open your mouth, they'll try and go in for a look. They try and go up your nose, all sorts. So. It was not nice conditions to be stood up there all day, that's for sure. One minute, the sun would come out, it would burn you. It would go away. You'd feel like you were freezing to death, and then a fly would try and go up your nose. So it was a bit of a nightmare. And there's also another guy called Todd, um, one of my friends. He's from the, the local track. He was with Mark as Mark's assistant, um, and you know he was up there all day as well. And th this is without thinking about all the other you know race director and stuff. Obviously, they got to go in a little room though, so probably a bit more uh, a bit more nice conditions for them. But yeah, I mean everyone there did a really stellar job keeping us all racing. Nothing really went wrong. So. Yeah, I mean, it was a good world. 
So on that, so comparing it back to the track itself, I was out in Vegas with you for 2016 mainly because it was a trip to Vegas and who doesn't, right? Oh, of course. The thing we noticed, and I remember they, the, the, the track was deteriorating at some point. You, they, after the main straight, there's a bit of technical work, yeah. and there's a, there's a big cross a lot, section. A lot of points. And there's a pothole where they placed a kid, he must have been about eight or ten, got him to sit cross legged, and he virtually disappeared, like up to his shoulder, sort of thing. Did the track stay a lot better, more consistent? I know you're saying about the water, but it, yeah. did it generally stay more consistent than what Vegas seemed to do? Yeah, uh, it did. Um, it was always going to, the dirt was different. The Vegas dirt is notorious for breaking up and, and going all nasty. Um, just because of the you know, ge geographical location of it, is they have a, a soft, powdery type dirt. Um, this wasn't, it was more of a red clay, but it did get really dusty. Um, without water, and it wouldn't have been as bad as Vegas, but it would have broke up quite a lot, okay. I think. You never know though, because you know, with the rubber that goes down, it might, it might not have. But from what I could see, even towards the end of its, you know, four runs of it being dry, it was, it was gonna get sketchy. So by watering it, they made it all stay together. Okay. And then for the finals, you know, it was still in pretty good condition, apart from the, the step down, which was, let's say, a little bit rougher in the start, but it was good condition. Um, so yeah, it was the right right call to water. Well, that, that step down, you know, watching the, as we were watching here, so many people were getting taken out by that just across the board. Yeah, people make mistakes out here, there and everywhere. There's a lot of runs. I think someone said there's like 45,000 laps have been done on it. But that bit was the bit that, if you ever thought anything was going to happen, it was going to happen there. Yeah, I mean that was it was it was a dangerous spot. As I said, you you were never quite sure if you were going to make it or not. It wasn't one of them sections where you knew you got it right or wrong. It was like, ah, cool, we got away with it, or <sighs> bollocks or whatever. <laughs> we didn't get away with it. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's just it's one. I think every track likes to have a section like that just to make it a little more interesting but um yeah in the end uh, it, it played out so just to give some context i don't race eighth i'm just you know this is basically we're doing an interview to just talk about catching up on the world we know it's a couple of weeks ago but on garro's run just looked epic even to me i do you know i do one tenth electric but it just looked epically smooth all the way through were you guys down there at the track watching that and or you getting feedback on how it's doing how are you how are you absorbing it yeah i mean i the grandstands were pretty full by the time I got out there because I didn't want to go sit in Fly Haven for like <laughs> 45 minutes before the event. So um, I actually went and stood on a chair at the back. Uh, I was good with old man Skidmore for a while and then the flies annoyed him and he left. So I watched the whole final basically on my own, um, looking at timings and, 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 and just seeing what was going on. And I mean, he drove a stellar race. I mean, you can't take it away from him. We've seen him do it a few times in Europe but this was just phenomenal, you know, an hour long final, a track that was, it was difficult and he was spot on almost every lap. Um, I think by the halfway point he moved into the lead and to be honest, I, I assumed he was gonna put a lap on everyone. It was, it was going that way. Um, he was just pinpoint accurate every lap, very in control, very comfortable, whereas others were making a few mistakes here and there. Um, I think that the biggest shout out to him has to go to his jumping capabilities. I okay. mean, the boy can jump. Um, the triple in the middle, you know, I don't think he landed on a different spot from about that every lap. And you know, it was the same thing every lap, bosh, 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 bosh. He tweaks it in the air, does a whip, as you call kids call it. Um, but he does it to make himself perfect, to yeah. make him land on that spot. He doesn't do it to look cool, he doesn't do it because it's good for the fans or whatever. He does it so he kind of lands perfect every time. And it does. And even he did the temp scale Euros at Reims where you were as well. And even there watching him, his, his jumping was, was far better than anyone else's. Um, you know, with some more experience in temp scale, he would be really good there as well. So he made the finals and you know, that, that in itself is a great achievement for him. Um, I'm sure not doing much temp scale at all. Um, but yeah, even there you could tell his jumping was just spot on. And that really plays in ape scale, especially at a track like this where there's quite a lot of jumps and stuff. And he was just very in control. Um, worthy, worthy winner. Well, what I liked that came out, I think it was only a couple of days ago, is that they've had the technical director or head of scrutiny, whatever his official title is, he's come out with a full cast iron statement on Red RC for mm -hmm. people to have a look, have a look for it, um, stating exactly what was done to prove that there was no foul play 
I mean, I think that's a, it's almost bad that you have to justify that because like F1, we don't, you, you never get, you know, the interview with the, the driver, and then we go over to Scrutineering to talk about what you know what have McLaren done this week. Whereas it seems that the hobby is almost like it's looking for something that is sometimes not there, but they want it to be there to to scare manga, to gossip, do whatever. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm really happy they they did tear the cars apart, Scrutineering. Yeah. Not because. I ever thought you, anyone was doing anything wrong. I'm happy that it's proved no one was. You know, it's the exoneration. Yeah, everyone can forget about the Ongaro using a gyro thing. I mean, he he drove with me at Mugen for a long time, and as far as I'm aware, he never used a gyro. You know, it's uh, there was, in my opinion, no no way that he was using one. Um, I know they're legal in races in Italy. I think that that's what also makes people suspect a few things. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but yeah, no, he, he wouldn't jeopardise that. He's too young and he's too good. He's too good to do that. So I'm really glad they ripped the cars apart and they found there was nothing in there. No foul play. Awesome. The kid won. He deserved to win. And he will win more, I'm sure. Bring it back to 10th for a minute. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're into lovely weather seasons. We're in a shed in the middle of Newbury in the rain. Yep. EOS, obviously racing it goes indoors. EOS is the high profile one. We've had the Nürburgring and we've had Poland. Mm -hmm. How have they gone? Yeah, I mean, um, our two-wheel drive car this this season's EOS is so far has been awesome. Um, the Yokomo guys did a really good job over the summer testing some new parts and new setup has made, uh, made all the difference really. Um, yeah, the car's been very good. So I managed to TQ the first one, finished second on, on count back. Um, tied for the win but Yona won by point three, I think it was in the end <laughs> yeah so I just missed out on that one and then uh, second round um, just this past weekend the driver let it down a bit um, car was really good had a shot a very good finish um, but yeah driver just messed up a couple of times in the first couple of legs and didn't get it done so ended up finishing fifth still not a terrible result um, but yeah, it could have been so much more so, yeah, full drive. It's been getting better. Um, we're getting more comfortable with it. It's still, we're still learning with the car. To be honest, uh, we're still not quite as fast what we need to be. Obviously, we're always working towards that. Uh, I think the the Schumacher car and carpet has has, has pushed things forward a little bit. Um, they seem to have hit the nail on the head with something. We have a few ideas of what it is, but we haven't we haven't quite got the parts to to copy that yet as such. Um, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, we've had a fifth, fifth and a fifth, I think. So, yeah, getting closer. But on that side, we've also got the fact that we've now got young Mr. Crompton. Yep. It's his first double A main was in Poland? Uh, first double A main in Poland, yeah. Um, he's made, he made full drive at the first round, Nürburgring. Okay. And he made a full drive at the end of last year at the Arena 33, and now he's made his first double. So first two drive and full drive. Uh, yeah, you know, showing solid improvements, getting better all the time. Um, now he's starting to listen. He's matured a lot in the last six months, a year. Um, he listens a bit more now. Still, still, you know, he needs to work on his car a little bit more. I tell him that all the time. Um, but you know, his prep going up to the event's really good. Just when he's at the event, he always kind of just settles and, and doesn't want to change much. Um, where sometimes we need to look for a little bit more. But you know, his driving has been superb so far. Um, it should continue on, getting better and better. Well, it's interesting to talk about the, the maturity bit because, you know, I've been chatting to Paul a lot about, like, helping me with what I'm doing. Help me a load out of the Euros when I was having, like, ridiculous problems out there. And Silverstone, the Silverstone Winter Series, he's, he's won the first two. And it was actually, we've got some footage of that, which we'll be showing now. But it was, that's in the second round. But the first round, he was he there. He he TQ'd the meet. He was off three and a half minutes in. He's coming round and just out of nowhere, all of a sudden, he grip rolled. And the the, the cars two and three who were coming up behind him were, were no slouches. Don't let's not get this wrong. And they were they came through. And the marshal was uh, got a tricky spot. It wasn't the marshal's fault. He got cars going this way. He got cars going that way. And he was looking over here just the moment it happened. You're sitting there going, oh, no, the typical, typical moment. And then he, he realised, sprinted to the car and overshot. So he's hammering down to the car, overshot, and bang, he missed it, went back. And I thought, that's it. Paul's just going to throw this one away. He's just going to sit there and go, Ugh. And 
he didn't. And, and I was sitting there going, because I was so disappointed for him, I was thinking, no, this is so unfair. And then he pulled it together and he just went off after second and third. And, and just nailed them down. Yeah, second and third, uh, well, who were now first and second were, were tussling a little bit. And that let him catch up. But there was, I thought he was going to throw it away, but he just th got past them and then just took it in. And it's just like, it was great. And I was sitting there going, I've not seen him drive like that. Mm. So it's really nice to see that. And I also think he's helping, he's helping pit those around him more. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the you know, younger members of, like, of our team. And, and yes, he mustn't mistake him for Johnny Bravo. You know, it's easily done with that hairstyle. It is. But he's stepping up to almost like the reputation. So it's like Paul Crompton, the name versus the guy driving I think he's certainly getting to that stage where he can pull it together even when it all not all goes wrong but it's gone wrong badly for him which is not, which is outside of his is you know outside of his control and then he suddenly goes bang done dusted and pulls it back and we were sitting there going that's the best drive I think I've ever seen him do so when it came back from you know from Poland I was like going this is great news you know he's suddenly gone and done it he's he's getting there yeah. the question is is you know I now think he's you know, Silverstone's going to be a good one for him is when we start looking at the MKGP and you know is he going to make the podium there how is he going to do against you know because his natural competitive you think about for ages to his Olavsky how is he going to compare to him because he seems to be doing very well at the moment yeah you know Olavsky is a super talent uh, he's very committed and, and, and yeah he's doing what he's doing you know with Paul the, you know the la last season's EOS is I was a little disappointed with him in, in the early stages. Okay. Um, obviously, he joined us and then come, and, and a few a few people around him would rub off on him a little bit, and he would he would he would, you know, almost get in if it wasn't going well, going to a bit of a salt, be a bit defeatist with it. You know, stuff that kids do. Yeah. You know, it happens. It's happened to me. It happens to a lot of kids. You know, it's just it's just maturing. It's just maturity. That's what, and that's what's showing now. He's. He's not getting so defeated if he has a bad result, and you know, kind of like that final. If he had a mistake, normally he would toys out the pram. Yeah. See you later. Exactly. Um, and he would, you know, not end up third. He would end up eighth, ninth, tenth. Whereas in fact now he's gone. Well, that's a mistake. We can get through this. Let's work harder for the next two minutes, for the next race, for the next, you know, weekend, whatever. It's that attitude to get back up and go at it again, which is, which is hard to build into people. Um, but you know he's definitely coming along in that area so it's never give up attitude that's what we all need I mean we all want to give up sometimes you've got to tell your brain not to get up take another step keep going Yoko has just launched the YZTT it's stadium truck X-Ray's got one out AE's got one out is this a new release a new lease of life for them do you think it's going to really catch on and go how do you think it's going to affect the market? This is, you know, generally with with the major brands having them all out, and you know, MKGP's got two, I think, two full heats um, of stadiums and two full heats of, of short course. Are trucks making a comeback? Is it a wave, or is it, or is this here to stay? I think, I think, I'd like to see trucks here to stay. Um, you know, they would need their own national series. We can't, we can't implement in, into ours because it's too busy as it is. Um, but I would like to see trucks stay. You know, trucks used to be huge when I was younger. We had, they had their own national series. It was very well subscribed. Um, you could become truck national champion. Um, and it, it just kind of phased off. You know, four-wheel drive become a lot more popular. So people's second classes moved into four-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, they would maybe do two-wheel drive and truck or something like that. Especially in America, it was a big two-wheel drive and truck scene. Um, now it's two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, and truck kind of got forgotten. Short course brought it back a bit. Um, short course was the, the the stage that we needed between beginner and, and racer. It was a it was a beginner's class. It was you know meant to be. A guy could go into a hobby shop. Oh, that looks cool. I'm going to get one of them, and he would buy a short course truck that looked like his pickup truck outside, and he would go and race it. And then from there, he would get the bug of racing, and he'd move into tool drive or whatever. So short course was hugely important for our industry, especially at the time it was when the, the industry was actually going a little bit down. Short course brought it all back, brought new faces to it, re-energized it. Okay. Truck now, it's not doing that because it's not really what it's there for. It's there to be a third class or second class or whatever, or even a first class for some people. So I hope that it gets, it gets the popularity it deserves. I mean, the cars are cool. They look fun to drive. I'm, I'm in the middle of building mine, ready for 
MKGP in the next EOS. Um, I spoke to a few people about maybe trying to do a truck series next year, our own little race series, and getting that going. Because I think trucks could be could be a pretty good stopgap for people doing ape scale that want to get into temp scale. It's got big tires and it's a big truck and it's they like wearing know, dungarees. It, yeah, you, you dungarees <laughs> and check shirts and all that stuff, straw in your hat. So um, it, it could be very popular. Um, it needs people driving it. I think if you get some people driving it at clubs, other people are going to drive it. Trucks used to be quite fragile because they were effectively the same as like a two-wheel drive mm -hmm. back in the day, but it had bigger wheels, so it had more leverage to brake stuff. Bigger wheels and longer arms, more leverage, snap, done. Now they're very strong, you know, same with all of the cars these days, they're all strong. So you're not going to brake stuff. I think if they get the tyres sorted, um, Schumacher come up with a tyre that lasts a bit longer. I heard the tyres don't last a huge amount of time yet. Okay. Um, then I, I think it could be very popular. Um, yeah. Going back to, well, on that thing about being popular and, and people like it, I remember when we were at MKGP this January, mm -hmm. so that's the first one they ran. It was always the trucks that got the biggest crowd. Yeah, it was great, you know, for us, we're watching like how, you know, how you and Neil and such like are doing the, in the two wheel drive and the four wheel drive, and we're keeping an eye on that. But if you actually looked out at the crowd, it was the deepest when the trucks were on, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it's a crowd pleaser. Yeah, I mean, they love the, the bash and tumble, anything with noise. Remember, like, if you have a short course or a truck and it's got a big body shell, and every time you crash it, it makes a big noise. Kids love that. Yeah. It's like they love the noise, love to see it crash. If it looks bigger and it crashes, it looks more impressive. You can, you know, rub a little bit more wheels with them, especially short course, you can rub wheels. So, you know, it is a crowd pleaser and it is fun. I hope it doesn't get too serious because when stuff gets a bit too serious, that's when it, it loses fun element a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, they look so cool. Well, I think it'd be, it's, it's an interesting point you made about the, um, like, almost like the introductory bit because having come back to racing like when I did there was no there was no intermediate and for me it's fine you know I used to race as a kid and came back and went straight back in and went right I'll get a race kit that's it I'm going to go racing it wasn't like I'm going to bash around in the garden and do that sort of stuff and I'm not saying the trucks are there for bashing it's the fact that n that now that even though racing is cheaper on a on a day to day basis, week to week, month to month, the outlay initially is a lot higher there's no hmm. intro yeah. into it whereas I think if the trucks can fill that because you know if you just turn around and someone who doesn't know and turn around and put a you know a tenth in front of them and go that's it and it's going to be this to, to to get it going when you turn around and put a truck and it's something bigger it's bolder yeah it's something more tangible for whether it be a parent or or whoever's doing the the, the financing for it to go i've got all this and that's something quite demonstrable to do it's like the x max you know we were playing around with at milton Keynes on the yeah, track yeah i think even if you look um on the retail side of things they do some cheap trucks and buggies a company called FTX do a cheap truck, Carnage, and yeah. a cheap buggy, the Vantage. From my experience, you know, your, your parents coming in for buying their, their kid a car or whatever, they always went for the truck. You know, almost same price. Yeah. One's a buggy, one's a truck. The truck looks bigger, looks more impressive, look like you get more for your money. You know, and, they, and they, effectively, you can drive over bigger stuff. You can go over grass and stuff, whereas buggies struggle a little bit if you haven't mowed your lawn properly. If you've not got it down to, you know, putting green, <laughs> yeah. nice grass. So, yeah, I think trucks, they're here now. The big guns have, have invested in it. You know, Yokomo Associated, Losi have a truck, X-Ray have a truck, Schumacher are obviously working on a truck because yeah. they have their two drivers using it. So the big guns have invested, which means it's going to be here for a while. It's here to stay. Let's embrace it and get racing. Welcome to the news. In this segment, we're going to talk about current events, just quickly glaze over stuff, uh, let you know what's been happening and our opinions on it. So I've gone back five pages on Red RC and uh, I'm just gonna pick, pick a few things up. So first thing there is a drift performance gyro from Yokomo. We don't know anything about drift. It looks pretty and it's a Yokomo product. So it's gotta be good. Um, what else we got? Actually, yeah, is, is that going to be like drift mode like you get on like the Focus ST and all that sort of stuff to I just think, help yeah. people get into it? Well, you know, well, I don't know, if you're racing ape scale, a lot of people think it makes you really fast, right? So <laughs> now this is just for their, their drift cars, it's a new gyro, it just looks smaller than their old one. Schumacher Top Cut, re-released. You see, that came out, that was coming out just when I was, about the time I was giving up uh, to go off to uni and all this sort of stuff. So I saw it and went, yeah, that's great, you know, it's kind of cool, but... 
you know when the XLS came you know, it was re-released I was kind of like do I want one out for nostalgia purposes or not and I I, I struggle with them because I sit there and go the cars have come on a lot and yeah I, I is think it scratching the niche if you had one it's cool to have another one yeah for me I never had one although it looks cool with the inboard front shocks I appreciate that I never had one it was before my time so for me it, it has no nostalgia for me it's just it's just a cool re-release I um I mean, I've got a re-release of Vanti, but I had an Avanti, and I've got an original Avanti, so that's got a piece in my heart. So, you see, that I can understand because, because yeah. I, even though I didn't race one, I really want one because I just think that it's the best-looking body shell on any <laughs> RC car Super ever done. Space fighter body shell. Yeah, whatever, whatever it was, I just think it's awesome. And I keep playing with the idea of looking on eBay for for an Avanti I just for the. They're yeah, cool. Yeah, very cool. I even I built it, and it was awesome. Um, Monaco RC diff check adapters. Um, yes, have we seen a new diff checkers? No. Oh no, no. I think well, I think I've seen a bit about them, but it's just like, what? What is the? Oh, yeah, they're pretty cool. Like for me, it'd be really good testing all these different ape scale buggies. You can actually put it on, and it gives you a reading of how thick the diff oil is. Yeah. Because obviously, we look at ape scales and go, oh, we're running ten, ten five, or oh, we can try ten, ten five in a different car. The diff's different, so it might be a completely different thickness. Okay. You know, it's, it's stiffness, it's rigidity, it's different. So this will check it, so you can kind of marry them all up. It's really clever, actually. I like the idea. For most people, it's probably pointless. One Up Racing Pit Iron have released a bundle. Really cool pit iron. Um, yeah, they released a bundle. Randy Castle, good guy in America. X Ray released a new truck. You know, true to X Ray fashion, new year, new truck, new buggy, new, you know, everything. So TLR 22 5.0 tool drive buggy coming soon. So I saw a picture, picture of that got released, I think at the IOCC in Vegas, because mm -hmm. I think, I don't know who was running it, but I saw pictures being flashed around of it. TLR though, it's, you know, it's, is it, is it going to be a success in the UK with the, with the support? I don't think so. It's good to see them doing something. TLR, very, you know, big brand in our industry, have a lot of history. Um, yeah, it's cool to see them making an astro carpet car. Obviously, it shows that times are changing in America as well. A lot of yeah. carpet racing going on there. So, yeah, it's cool to see them do it. Let's let's see how it gets on. Um, seems to have kind of followed a lot of what other cars are doing. You know, it's got a low front wing, and yes, it's we'll see. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many we'll see in the UK, but I'm sure we'll see if some in Europe with Savoy running it and stuff. Maybe they'll come to EOS. Um, then the IIC report from Vegas, um, Orlowski taking full drive, as expected for me really, he's been really on fire with that cap, um, but Brock Chaplin taking two-wheel drive, you don't know that, don't know Brock? No. No? I mean, I, I don't know Brock that well, but fast kid, obviously very fast if he's mixing it with all them guys at that race, um, he, he dominated two-wheel drive by the looks of it, so. TMG released some new pistons for the S-Works buggy. TMG, Dave Burton, mm -hmm. um, good pistons, um, slightly different characteristics to others. Uh, they're very thin. I've, I've heard they're really good on carpet. I've tested them. They are they are good, although we don't run them as often in Yokomo's. I think associated run them quite a lot. Bitty design, a truck body shell. Yeah, proper articulated truck. I think it's cool. Yeah, I want to see a real truck like that, not just a an RC one. See an Eddie Stobart come past, like that. that'd be cool. <laughs> John Hazelwood wins Nemo Racing Roadshow Race. I know they went down to Plymouth this weekend racing Ape Scale on AstroTurf track. Soki Takahata defends his national Japanese title in Ape Scale on road. See the Infinity guys are second and third. Some MIP bypass shock pistons for a Mugen. Pretty cool. Are these ones that are being touted around where basically they've got a separate layer sitting on top of the, mm. the shock piston itself. Yeah, yep. They have a bypass so it goes one way, it's allowed to suck yeah. through, it goes the other way, it stops it. Something I'd like to try. Cool cool ideas. You know, we've had it a few times in temp scale as well. So, yeah, pretty clever stuff. I'd like to have a go with one of them. So, Matt, send me one. Yokomo Racing Performer Charge Leads. I need some new charge leads, so it's good timing. I'm sure that's... I'm, I. No doubt in my mind, that's what they did. It went, what does Lee need? Charge leads. We're going to sort out charge leads, yep. you know. Exactly, and they'll make you faster too. They've got thicker leads, they'll put more power in. Obviously, I'm talking rubbish. So, thanks for watching the news. It's my time to sign out. 
Um, make sure you subscribe to the video down there. We're having lots of uh, updates, probably monthly, maybe a bit, bit more frequent during the summer when we've got better weather and we can go. We're going to do uh, track reviews. We're going to look at cars. We're going to talk about team moves. We're going to talk about all loads of stuff. So, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you for the next one.